um, why I think limited government is truly utopian and unsustainable. It's a point made by Stephen Molyneux, and I think he's exactly correct on this point. The thing is that with limited or reduced intervention into the economy, uh, what's going to result is a huge explosion of wealth. You have So you have a, a government, which is a coercive institution by definition, that lives by extracting uh, money, wealth from people by force, with really without their consent. If we're talking about a, a, like a unanimous consent, consensual government, that's really not a state. Okay, uh, it will always, there will always be an element of coercion, and and you know this element will tend to be huge. Like okay, even in today's United States, I can imagine some people, maybe, are happy to pay their taxes. Most people would not pay their taxes if they had that option. Um, so. So the state exists. Let's say it's a minimal state. It, it limits itself to like army, police, and courts. There's no economic regulation. There's no licensing. There's no you know government-sponsored and enforced restriction of entry into specific industries. There are no tariffs. No nothing. Well, what's going to happen is a, a tremendous explosion of wealth. But we already have in place two powerful ingredients. One, an existence of a coercive institution whose revenues do not depend on the consumer's desire or consent, or really desire to consume their product. The services, dispute resolution services, law enforcement, um, defense. So there already is an institution that exists by force. And you have lots and lots and lots of wealth sloshing around. What's going to happen is, as it always has, it always will, uh, people will self-select to go into government, the kind of people who prefer to live by forceful extraction of wealth rather than by providing goods and services in exchange for wealth. This minimal government will be ever incentivized to go after that new wealth that resulted from the fact that the government so minimal. I don't think that those two things, uh, the existence of a coercive institution that will tend to attract a certain type of person, uh, and the, the existence of that uh, institution, and the, the sort of the, 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 the fact that um, the, the, the sheer existence of that kind of institution is already legitimate in the minds of the people, it, and it will be always tempted to slice off to carve out just a little bit more, a little bit more out of this huge mountain of wealth that the society is going to generate. I think these t reasons are powerful enough to consider in thinking about whether a minimal government is sustainable. I don't think it is. Uh, an example of the United States, which at its inception was probably the most libertarian government on earth, and in which 230 some years later has turned into the most powerful, the most uh, capable government on earth. Like, you know, and people argue about this, and I used to be uh, disturbed by these comments. I now see that they're actually true. Uh, yeah, there are governments in the world that will pursue very evil ends and they will do evil things to their populations. But the thing is, lots of those governments are bi are not really capable of doing much. I mean, like somebody was talking about, I forget whose lecture it was I was listening to, like I think it was a fee podcast, uh, that, you know, say Chinese government. Chinese government may be brutal and, you know, they don't profess any high uh, standards in terms of adhering to some principles of liberty or they don't have a U.S. constitution. Yeah, but they can't do much. I mean, they... No organization is going to be effective enough to be able to control, you know, uh, over a billion people at the same time, and be able to uh, have the wherewithal, the technology, the manpower, the resources, the know-how, the competency to really monitor the lives of so many people, and to be able to intervene and interfere with their activities on, on pretty much a daily basis. The, the Chinese government can do much to the vast majority of their population. Effectively, the vast majority of the Chinese population is pretty much outside of the government's reach. Not so in the United States. In the United States, the government has a tax base, the government has the technology at its disposal, the government has the people 
to really mess with you, like really mess with you. Go after every single transaction that leaves a paper trail. If they wanted to, they could. Uh, they have, they will, they are. Um, like finan your financial life is completely, like, uh, if you're reading the news, you, 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 know, you know that there are stories out there, people arrested and their wealth, uh, their, their property confiscated from them just because they were traveling with uh, a relatively large sum of cash in their pocket. If you're carrying, uh, what is it now, over $2,000 in cash, you're a suspect. And you can be detained. Things can happen to you that are not nice, that are not pleasant, that are not desirable. And the point is, the U.S. government can do that. Why am I saying this? Well, the most libertarian government on earth has devolved into one of the most oppressive uh, governments on earth, a government that can, can, practically can, inflict great harm on a great number of its citizens. Um, I think the reason for that is because the U.S., the United States, have become really wealthy, and that wealth has fueled the growth and the development of this government. Uh, I don't know if this is a definitive argument uh, against the sustainability or the stability, the inherent stability of the minimal government. I, I, you know, it, it's very convincing to me. Let me know what you think. I'm sure you have uh, lots of great ideas. This is just one simple point that I wanted to share with you guys.